I've had a couple of different experiences with hybrid learning. Uh, first, I uh, was part of a, a design team that designed our integrated research methods class for the college, CSBS 330. And we decided to use a hybrid approach there. My other uh, experiences have been with individual classes and i have always looking for opportunities to use a hybrid model that will enhance student learning and maximize my ability and my time to work with students on things that um, are not well suited for the hybrid environment. I've used several different ap approaches. Uh, I think everything always starts with course design and I usually try and really map out the course and the learning outcomes I want and then try and figure out the best ways to reach those. Um, one approach that I've used that has been really successful is to create concept maps which are visual pictures for the students that help them to understand the big picture of the concept. I also have many, if not most, of my lectures in a PowerPoint notes format for them to be able to follow along. From there, I've used um, a couple of different things. I have a virtual chat room that I use for office hours sometimes to uh, provide students a little more access. Um, I, one thing I'm planning on using and have not yet, but is my next project is to start using Tegrity and uh, get uh, uh, some of the things that are frequently asked questions uh, where I can do things and show things, especially, for example, in research methods and I want them to, uh, they all, all are in the same place on SPSS or, or Excel and I can show them things. Uh, that's real helpful. Another thing I've done is in some of my classes I'm now using uh, the Respondus Lockdown browser and for online testing. The great thing about this is testing time is often just wasted time. You know, they're sitting there, they're doing their thing, I'm trying to assess them and, uh, and uh, with the Respondus Lockdown browser I don't have to use class time for that. Um, I set it up where they could take the test as many times as possible as they wanted and they had to achieve at least an 80 percent pass rate but they can achieve more too if they want and um, what I've discovered is a lot of learning takes place because if they take it and don't do well then they're supposed to go study and then come back and try it again the next day and um, that that's proved to be very successful. Um, I have a number of some of my PowerPoints with voiceovers on them and that's been nice because uh, what I don't want to do on some of those is have them watch that instead of coming to class and listening to me because there's a much, much more uh, active when it's interactive in class. What I've started doing on those though is I will do the class lecture but then later post that for review and uh, that gives them a chance to go back and review things. It's also a way to for that student who had a legitimate reason not to be there to get caught up. One thing that I think is really important and I've learned this through trial and error and also with the good advice and counsel of the the uh, folks in e-learning is that it's really important to match the tools to what I'm trying to accomplish. And so uh, often I go in and I'm visiting with someone and saying, well, this is what I'm trying to do. What tools are available? And then they talk to me about the tools and then I start exploring them with them and then I make up my mind and then I move forward with that tool. Um, I think uh, the learning process is really facilitated with students when it's a combination of face-to-face -face lectures, uh, coaching, mentoring, online materials, and uh, what's important is to massage your 
materials and your class to meet your purpose. Uh, not every, I don't do the same things in every class. Some classes are much more uh, with the use of the hybrid and some are much less. But um, uh, one of the things I like about the hybrid approach is there's a certain amount of efficiency there. And anytime I can become more efficient, then it gives me more time to spend with the students doing coaching and mentoring, which is not possible, uh, at, or not as possible, uh, on, uh, in the e-learning world, uh, in the electronic world. Uh, or maybe it's just my style. I'd rather spend time talking face-to-face -face with a student about some things and not spend time on others. To summarize, what I really try and do is be very, very intentional in my use of uh, Blackboard and all of the other uh, tools. Um, and my goal, my primary goal is always the student's learning, uh, but my secondary goal is efficiency and effectiveness for me. Um, another example is uh, I have uh, one lecture that I use in almost every class that's kind of a leveling lecture. Well, I've actually got that stored where students can't see it in my uh, Dr. Stafford virtual advising site and then as needed I copy and paste it and moved it into my other uh, classes. Well, that's very efficient for me, and so I'm actually using the technology as my electronic storage place, and I don't have to recreate things. It's just a new copy and paste each quarter. Uh, another, uh, and so there are several things like that that I do. And so good luck, have fun, and uh, uh, explore the, the, the electronic world because the, the hybrid courses have really helped me, I think, to become more effective in my teaching.